the truth about PlayStation 5 third-party exclusives, Naughty Dog's new game, and Sony deletes a feature off the PS5. All this in today's video. Please like the video, subscribe to never miss a PlayStation update, and share the video to help grow our community. Now, the argument that PS5 exclusivity harms game sales is now countered by data, particularly with the Silent Hill 2 remake, where 78% of European sales were on PS5 compared to the 22% on PC. While high spec PC requirements may have affected the PC sales, the PS5's dominance is quite clear. Similar trends are also seen with Final Fantasy 16, which had an underwhelming PC sales despite initial exclusivity concerns studios like shift up with stellar blade are now exploring pc releases as well but there's uncertainty about how full priced games will perform on that platform so it looks like the speculation about third-party exclusive deals that playstation had hurting games is not necessarily true i think it's pretty clear that playstation fans have been known to support good games and the platform being as big as it is also highlights the benefits of being there, with Silent Hill 2 making a great case as well. I think in most cases, single player games benefit greatly from leveraging Sony's marketing and deals. As far as multiplayer titles go, I can see those titles being more important for a multi-platform approach. Of course, we will see what happens with uh, Stellar Blade. We will also see what happens with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth if those PC releases will truly make that difference and make these different devs look at it and kind of re-examine how they approach uh, third-party exclusive deals. I think the time will tell. I don't see there being a massive difference in the case of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but I do see Stellar Blade maybe getting a bigger benefit from launching on PC afterwards. Now, moving on to Naughty Dog, guys. They have a new game, obviously, in development. We know this from job postings and everything else. But rumors about Naughty Dog's next game suggest it will focus heavily on player freedom. This comes from the Min Max show where host Ben Hansen shares insights from a source familiar with the game. The source emphasized that it would be amazing and compared it to another game known for player freedom, though Hansen didn't reveal the title. Naughty Dog's previous games like The Last of Us Part 2 and Uncharted The Lost Legacy have already explored more open-ended gameplay, but this new project is expected to push that even further. While specific details are scarce, recent games like Elden Ring or Tears of the Kingdom are examples of player freedom that could serve as inspiration. Additionally, a job posting in August hinted at the possibility of third-person and first-person perspectives, suggesting Naughty Dog is open to exploring new gameplay styles. Ben Hansen's exact quote was, I heard from somebody very in the know who worked on the game that they are like, Jesus Christ, the tone was like, you are all not ready for how amazing this is going to be. And the tone was, I'm not going to say the game that they referenced to compare it to, but they compared it to a game with a lot of player freedom. Now, Naughty Dog has proven themselves to be one of the best to ever create games in the history of the industry. So when I say most people expect greatness from them, I think that's a fair statement. I am all for seeing them try new things and go in new directions, but I think it's quite clear that they are under a lot of pressure to deliver on their next game, which seems to be a new IP. I do think The Last of Us Part 3 will eventually happen, but I do think they're probably trying to deliver on a new IP first and then jump into The Last of Us Part 3 to give us something in between. And I think that that's ideal. Giving some more time in between those two entries is, is going to probably benefit the most as they all have more ways of exploring the story, exploring on how they wanna advance that gameplay from part two to part three. So I'm excited to see what they do with it all. And obviously Naughty Dog, you know, they, they have my trust as far as making great games go. You know, the story in the last game was kind of mixed as far as how fans received it. But as far as the gameplay goes and how good the animation and all these other technical aspects of it were, it was pretty undeniable just how well they did with that. Now, lastly, I want to talk to you about this PS5 feature that was deleted after last month's PS5 system update, players noticed that the resume activity feature disappeared, and it now seems that Sony intentionally removed it. The latest update changed the wording on activity cards from resume to play game, removing the ability to jump directly into a specific part of a game. Players now can only start games from the main menu. While resume activity wasn't the most widely used feature, it had a loyal user base. Sony hasn't officially commented on the removal, but it's speculated that low usage led to its discontinuation. I personally never took advantage of this feature and won't feel its absence. 
I do think this being one of those major features that was highlighted prior to launch, and now to see it gone can feel a bit underwhelming. This is another feature along with the accolades that Sony removed due to lack of use. And in reality, if it's not being utilized, then can it be a major disappointment? I mean, if most people aren't using it, or if not enough percentage of people or developers are not using it, it kind of doesn't make sense to even have it as an option if only a small percentage of your population is even going to take advantage of it. It's an extra thing that causes more resources for people to go out there and develop this mechanic to be used in the first place. And on top of that is just another thing that shows up as a card cluttering your screen. So I think that if it's something that's not truly being utilized, then it's not such a bad thing that they're getting rid of that. I think that that, you know, for me personally, isn't the end of the world, but I'd love to hear from you guys. Maybe that is a big feature that you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments, but that is all I have for you guys in today's video. We covered quite a bit here. I would love to hear from you from the Naughty Dog new game, what you want to see, the PS5 exclusivity situation. Do you feel like games are being harmed by being PS5 exclusive? And lastly, did you use that PS5 cards feature to resume activities? As always, if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and share the video to help grow our community. I thank you all for watching. Take care.